Well, I wanted to show some of the videos that you've done, Matt, because they really capture so much about this liberal Zionism. <laughs> yeah. And they're very politically useful, actually. Let's start with the one where, because you brought up growing up thinking that maybe you'd have to go to Israel mm, to flee. Yeah. So let's watch that one. I, I've told Matt this. The first time I saw a Matt Lead video, right. I totally got punked. I totally got punked. I was right earned. ready to, I actually quote tweeted it. I'm like, look at this fucking liberal Zionist. <laughs> He was the sincerity, the deadpanness, and I'm hard to fool. So yeah. props to you, Matt. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people do not understand what Israel means to me uh, as an American Jew, uh, as a liberal Zionist. It's kind of like our plan B. Like our plan A, obviously, is to, you know, not have racist, bigoted genociders coming to power in America so we can live here peacefully. If that doesn't happen, then we're going to have to move to Israel. And the only way to escape the racist, bigoted genociders is to just do a racist, bigoted genocide ourself. You have to understand that, like, one day I might have to move there, probably. <laughs> Basically, we have to do our own genocide in order to not do, to get genocide. We have to do genocide firsties. I want to live in peace. I don't want to fight in a war. So I'm going to let the Israelis die in a war. And I'm going to let the Palestinians die even more in a war. I could show up and go, oh, good. There's no, there, we already did a genocide. And I can be like, that was bad. We shouldn't have done that. But, you know, I'm glad, though. I don't want to live in a war zone, so I want them to do the war now and then show up. But probably never. I don't even want to live there because I like it here because I've got a nice apartment. I'm in a good neighborhood for school. Like, I don't actually think I will ever move there. But just in case, they should kill all of them. Because what if we get genocided here? God forbid. So we got to do it first. Then, then I still won't move there, but I, I'll be glad. That's liberal Zionist. That, yeah, that yeah. one is yeah. kind of high concept. There's a moment where all of a sudden the world flips and your voice <laughs> yeah. changes and you go, like, it's it's well, like really another trippy. There's one that's kind of like that one, the bad one, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the bad one. That. I've gone yeah. bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. that one. I'm a liberal Zionist, and um, I have to say that I actually do agree with a lot of what the pro-Palestinian left has to say about Israel. The occupation is awful and it needs to end. The settlers are crazy. We have to do something about that. Netanyahu is a criminal. He's going to lead Israel to ruin. The 17-year siege of Gaza has been brutal and it is completely unconscionable. I agree that Israel is essentially, in parts of it, an apartheid state. But, like, the one thing is, after the 7th, the thing is, is that I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm bad now. Because, like, uh, here's the thing. After the seventh, I just kind of realized if it's us or them, then it's got to be us. No more them. I never thought I could be a fascist, but I think I'm a fascist now. And it's kind of great because I have all these new friends, me and Amy Schumer and the ugly guy from Stranger Things. And I'm getting all these new job opportunities. And I'm like, okay, if this is what I didn't know that fascism came with stuff. If I had known that, I'd have been a fascist a long time ago. It's kind of nice, too, because now I get to be like, ooh, I'm bad. So I'm just going to be bad now. Like, I can still believe all that other stuff, too, but just not now. I'm going to wait till later. But for now, I'm going to be bad. Okay. Bye-bye. I was like, oh, that's a fun way to, uh, like, you know, visually show someone turning into a little fucking baby. I, I turn into a fucking baby because this is, like, the thing I noticed. Like, both of those things are based on conversations that I had, and I've had nothing but fucking conversations since October 7th with um, Jews that I know who I've been watching, you know, like, become nationalists out of fucking nowhere. And, and trying to like, trying to, you know, like first hear them out because I'm not here to yell at them. And, you know, these are people that I know. I want to listen and I want to understand. Um, and then me trying to reason with them and just like hitting this brick wall where I realize at some point they just turn into a little baby in the conversation. It becomes yeah. like, you know, well, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like we have to, like, what else can we do? 
Yeah, it's I the love big, that. I love the that. Big I saw refrain. You, yeah, what else? And you actually tweeted this out. Not in character. You just tweeted this out. It wasn't a video. It's like, is there something between nothing and genocide? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. It's, it's just the dumbest. It's the dumbest premise. Like, well, what it's... we can't help but kill yeah. thirty thousand people because what's the other answer? No response. Yes, and and that that's the uh, you know this like this baby character that a lot of people put on some people i think are doing it earnestly i think uh, you know some people are just babies <laughs> you know i have a 15 month old baby and you know how many fucking things she thinks is a tractor everything right and that's what it's like talking to liberal scientists they think everything's a terrorist they think everything's a terrorist they think everything's anti-semitism and and a lot of people are doing this in this totally i mean they're they're full of shit that when yeah. when someone online says, especially someone who all they talk about uh, is how they are a Zionist and how Israel must win and all this, you know, these like online fucking paid Hasbaras. Some of them aren't paid. Some of them are doing it for clout, which, yeah. you know, congratulations. Or ideology. Or ideology. But, you know, I, I think it's uh, it's a mix of, of, of all these things. Yeah. Um, but you see them, you know, do this totally, you know, like this bullshit. You tell me what should israel do okay military experts and it's just like no one is claiming to be a military expert we're just looking at what's happening and saying this bad and the fact that people they're... want to immediately turn it turn everyone that they're talking to into uh the guy who, like you can't enter this conversation without having the exact right answer for how to solve the middle east and it's like that's their big one that's the big yeah. one what happens after a ceasefire and right. i say to them if you've got your knee on yeah. the sternum of a person for three years, never mind 75 years, mm -hmm. you do not get to say, well, what would happen if I got off him and obeyed the law? He might have a knife in his pocket. He might hate me. Right. It's like, what would happen you, you if we ended slavery? That's, right. That's exactly right. You don't think yeah. whites, you don't think that, you don't think that exact argument Right. was used and they had and they had evidence for it there was the nat turner slave revolt or whatever yes now if you're rational you understand that the nat turner slave revolt and john brown and all that is mm -hmm. a response to the thing yeah you know it's a right. you know so you end the thing and then you deal with it and you don't get to use your insecurity that is built up over these years by choosing to be an occupier which is inherently mm -hmm. an insecure and hopeless position and a traumatizing position for you actually because right. you have to be estranged from your humanity. You have yes. to, you know, and you have, you're always trying to keep on something that you know is not yours. Mm -hmm. So you either double down on that, like your character is doing, mm -hmm. or you give up the ghost and you say, you know what? We got to face the future of not knowing what's going to happen, but yeah. at least grounding it on, on principles that, that have some sanity to them. Yeah. Well, I want to show one where you kind of don't, because those are ones where you're kind of breaking character, but you have a lot of other ones where you don't break character. <laughs> yeah, um, these are the ones I get in the most trouble for. Yeah. Okay, so now South Africa is going to try to tell Israel that they're doing crimes against humanity. Really, South Africa? Really? Uh, didn't you guys invent apartheid? I'm just saying, given South Africa's history of human rights abuses, uh, maybe they should sit this one out. Am I right? <laughs> On a completely unrelated note, I would like to personally thank the Reichschancellor of Germany for speaking out against uh, The Hague and against any kind of war crimes prosecutions. Um, Germany has always been and will continue to be the best friends of uh, the Jewish people around the world. Except for like a couple of other things. Don't worry about that other stuff. This is a different kind. I like this. This is like the one, it's one person playing two uh, characters. I think Israel's gonna use this tragedy as a pretext to do like another Nakba. I think we as Jews need to speak out about this, man. Can you stop talking politics for just a moment and let me grieve? Where is your humanity? Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, you're right, you're right. Um, still grieving. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah, Gaza's not there anymore. It's been wiped off the map. How 
Let's okay. do one more. This is uh, the frustration of being asked about Gaza when you're just a comedian. Oh, thanks. Oh, and then we have to do the Black Alley ship one. Okay, so two more, yeah. <laughs> okay. You can no longer be silent. I know that I'm just a comedian and I usually use my platform for, you know, my little jokes, but some things are more important. And right now, I think it needs to be said that America is waging an illegal war on the Iraqi people. Hey, aren't you just a comedian? Yeah, I'm a comedian and a human being. And gay rights are human rights. Take a wee little break from being a little clown today to tell you that kids do not belong in cages, Trump. Didn't you used to be funny? Yeah, well, some things are more important than being funny, like trans rights. Just go to my bio and you will see a link to donate to Black Lives Matter. You'll also see a ticket link for my weekend at uh, Yuckety Yucks over in Tucson. It doesn't matter if you're a comedian <laughs> or if you're a musician, like if you have a platform, how could you not tell people about what's going on in the Ukraine? Uh, I don't think you want to know my opinion about what's happening in Israel-Palestine. I'm just a big dumbass. I'm fucking stupid. Like, when people ask me, I'm like, uh, you really want my opinion, Mr. Fucking Idiot? I'm the dumbest man in the world. And, like, I don't know about politics. Like, I'm just a guy who sits up on banana peel and go, wee. You know, you don't want to listen. People asking me, it's like, oh, okay, well, why don't you ask, uh, oh, why don't you ask Bozo the Clown? Because that's basically what you're doing when you're asking me. Because I'm fucking, I'm so dumb. I'm the biggest stupid. I can't think good. I, I, I don't want, I don't want to. I'm, I, like, <laughs> listen, dude. <laughs> That one was literally based on something I saw from uh, another comedian that drove me up the fucking wall. Um, and yeah, I, I, I've not seen that comedian in a while in person. So uh, I, I wonder if, if, uh, if he ever saw it, but it, uh, yeah, straight was up. Was this a video the comedian did? Yeah, or like it was a, a video he or... like put out uh, and, and it was just like big, uh, I'm, I'm the stupidest motherfucker energy. And I'm like, I've seen you talk about other things, yeah. bro. Like, yeah, th just, you know, if you don't want to say anything cause you're scared or whatever, yeah. um, that's I, like, it's understandable. Like, I don't blame anyone in the industry for being afraid for their job or whatever, you know, afraid for their prospects and not wanting to rock the boat, but don't feign dumbassery don't you know it, it just you know hide be, yeah. be be a coward but that's okay like i'm not gonna blame you for being a coward i'm scared of shit too you know just not this for some a, stupid fucking reason it's a classic thing where people are really um free to be virtuous and noble and brave when it takes no bravery at all right when, when you're speaking out on things no that basically the fit yeah the liberal yeah. consensus that yes. the corporate world can get with that yeah. you know there's just no there's just no cost at all in terms of your proximity to power and privilege if you have a different perspective or you try to you know fill in the blanks it there there are consequences and that's because the US security state has decided which way it's going to go and that's just the only way it's going to go so this is a case i mean israel is the most extreme case of yeah. thou shalt not tr trespass beyond this this place and people know it yeah, and I'm just like, listen, I know I'm literally in Hollywood. I'm in the entertainment industry. I'm not saying you won't face consequences. There are a bunch of fucking liberal or there's a bunch of Zionist bullies out there who will happily try to get you blacklisted. I'm not saying that that's not there, but I'm also saying like what happened to the solidarity of er earlier in the year? What happened to us against the bosses during the writer strike or during the SAG strike? Like you understand the concept of people power. And yeah. if you understand that, you understand that there's more of us than there are of them. Speaking of solidarity, let's take a look at this one about um, the sad breakdown in black Jewish relations. Oh yeah. Hey, I have a message for black Americans posting a Palestinian flag on social media. What the hell, man? You know, Jews have been nothing but good to you. And this is how you repay us, by calling for a ceasefire in a seemingly unrelated country 6,000 miles away. Where is the loyalty? During the civil rights movement, my grandfather's his best friend marched for your civil rights. I posted a black square. I didn't have to. I got to posted some eggs Benedict. I had that very day, but I didn't because I'm a good friend. I read White Fragility. 
I read it and I said, yeah, white people, not me, do be like that. They do. We stood side by side with you fighting white supremacy only for you to turn around and be like ceasefire. Like, whoa, that's a pretty extreme position. Like, how do you think that makes me, a guy you didn't know was Jewish until he told you, feel? Talk to your Jewish friends. Ask them about Palestine and we will gladly educate you to the fact that you're not educated enough to talk about it. You see, Palestine is like the Confederacy. We fought a war to defeat them and their corrosive ideology, which is why when a neo-Confederate does an act of terrorism, it is justified for us to carpet bomb their entire neighborhood. It's something we do. Don't take it from me. Take it from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who once said, and I quote, Israel is good and my favorite, and they can do whatever they want. And I feel like you're betraying that memory. I know you're speaking up because silence is violence, but you know what else silence is? Golden. Silence is golden. That golden rule. Do unto others as they did unto you. Mm, it's in the Bible. We marched with you against Jim Crow. We marched with you against police brutality, and we marched with you against mass incarceration. And all we ask in return is for you to let Israel do Jim Crow police brutality and mass incarceration. Fair's fair, man. Yeah, Do you lose I mean, any followers or friends over that? Uh, no, I, you know, I, I, I feel like that is one where anyone who got mad at it, who I knew, who was like a liberal Zionist, who they avoided being mad in public at that one, right? Of course, because right. that one it would be admitting that they were that exact type of person. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, that one I still get. Um, you know, uh, a little bit of, I mean, I still get comments on it, but from people who don't realize it's satire, right. I, I've, I've had a problem uh, with, uh, especially on, on TikTok. Well, I've been kind of shadow banned on TikTok or some shit. I don't know what's happening with that, but uh, um, I, I, on Instagram, I've had to like put like uh, uh, some text in the video that says, this is satire. Right. I used to Please. have that with Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, people are, I mean, I think it's because it sounds so close to what actual Zionists say that, like, m most people, like, if you're not catching the hint of satire, then you're missing the whole thing. And you're just like, this is just That's another what happened to me. fucking yeah. ghoul. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I get I get being tricked by it because at this point, we've seen more ridiculous things come from actual people, like, it's earnestly true. saying this shit. Yeah.